Yo, this is Stylecrong, and uh, I'm here with not a full replay today, but uh, decided I'd focus on one particular part of the game that I think was pretty influential, and I think there's like quite a bit to be learned from it. Um, let me just play this little part here first so you guys can see what the scenario was. So we had just done a team fight and pretty much wiped the other team. And so this is where we're at right now. We have Nova retreating on their team and Artanis is back at base healing. So to start off, this is a, a key example of decision making and how making certain decisions at certain points in time can really change the outcome of the game. So we're going to play this a little bit further. And we're going to see two pings on the map, I think. Relatively soon. There, there's two pings. This ping is mine, up here at the boss. And someone else pinged turn in. So at this point in the game, when you have three of the enemies down, which of these two options is better? Going for boss or going for the turn in? You go for the boss. Why do you go for the boss? because the boss puts pressure on your enemy. The boss is going to be here and force the enemy to come and defend, and it takes this objective off of the map. That objective is no longer there once you've taken it. While they're dealing with the boss here, you then go to turn in and get a free turn. Thusly, you get boss and turn in. If you were to go to turn in right now from this position, you would go down here, you would do your turn in, and the cannonballs would start shooting. And by that time, the other team would start respawning, and you would have lost any opportunity you had to do anything on the map. So, we'll play this up a little bit more here. I ended up just going straight to the boss. Everyone else is kind of just derping around. Artanis is kind of on point. So we go up here, we're going to end up getting this boss. And then the second thing I want to go over, which is uh, going to take place after this boss fight, is not only positioning in team fights, but the route that you take to get to the fight itself, which I think so many people mess up on. It's kind of astounding how many people will take really terrible routes to get to where the fight is taking place, and it pretty much just gets them killed. So anyways, right here I go ahead and I ping Bruiser Camp. So the thought process here is that we move as an entire group, all of us, we come down here to the Bruiser Camp, and we can test this bush right here. If everyone stands in this bush right here, and we have a, a talent advantage by one tier, although they're probably going to catch up by the time we get down here. But the point is, we want to contest them here in this bush, and force them to team fight in this area while the boss is pushing. Because while the boss is pushing, they have to either choose to waste their time and team fight against us, or they take a ton of damage uh, from the boss. Well, they take a ton of damage from the boss if they team fight us, and if they don't team fight us, then we get to take their mercenary camp for free. So it's their choice. They either give up this camp, or they take a bunch of damage at their base. So that's what this this call does here. Now, unfortunately, this is quick match. So, sometimes your plays don't always go as planned because people don't follow them up. Anyway, so I'm here. I end up using my ultimate here, and this is a really strange time for me to use my ultimate. Um, the reason I used my ultimate here was because it's quick match. And in quick match, you can't always rely on your allies being in the right place at the right time. So what this ultimate is going to do is pretty much let me have an extra window of opportunity to see if my team is going to actually follow up this play or not. So, Cindergrosa is going to come down. There. Now the other team is slowed. From this position, we can still disengage. If this goes sour and someone is not coming to the fight like this Tyronda, if we want to disengage this, we can because we have a slowing field here. So, as you can see, I'm going to play pretty defensively here. And I'm going to avoid engaging the Sonya because I realize Vikings are not with us right now, and Tyrande is not with us right now. 
So, you can go ahead and just back up. I want you guys to pay very close attention to Tyronda's positioning. Look where she's coming in for this fight. She's coming in from down here in the south. And this is pretty much going directly into their entire team. She's not behind Artanis, she's not behind Arthas. She, she chose to go all the way down here, all the way around, like this, and all the way up here. That does two things. One, it puts her in a terrible position once she does get to the fight, and two, it also it made her take a lot longer to actually get into position. And it can be critical to get into a position quickly if you want to get something like a, a vision advantage in a bush, which is actually more important than you might think, because... Uh, if the enemy doesn't have some way of lighting you up in the bush, they can't use any of their targeted abilities on you. So it's a pretty big advantage. Anyways, we'll go ahead and play this out here. Here comes Tyronda. Running pretty much into a 1v5. Because she's on the other side of this wall. So she's going to go in here. 1v5, basically. And she's going to die. <laughs> and this... This is where you get to find out when people are good or bad because here comes Tyran's response thank you Arthas yes that was entirely my fault it was entirely my fault that I wanted to make an aggressive play to come here and force them to decide between bruiser camp or boss and that you chose to go all the way around the map all the way up here and fight them in a position where it was pretty much 1v5 but uh, Tyrande's thought process is probably just, oh, I went to the team fight and I died. Wow, who made that call? Oh, it must have been Arthas. Oh, yeah, he's bad, right? Yeah, okay. Whatever you say, Tyrande. So anyways, as you can see, the rest of the team manages to make it out. We even pick up a kill there and we disengage perfectly because... I made sure that we played very defensively here, just in case something like that were to happen. Especially since Vikings weren't with us, this Viking player was playing a really passive game. So, anyways, uh, I think that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to go over those two things. Both the, the overall decision making and positioning during team fights, as well as the route you take to get to your position in the team fight. And, uh, yeah, hope you guys learned something, and I will see you guys next time. Take it easy.